Program here on the National One Scope. We're funded by the U.S. Department of Education through a grant. Um, we just started our, well, we'll begin our new five-year cycle in October. Just went through the renewal process. And my role there is um, heading up media evaluation and then negotiating with um, the media producers to make sure that we're able to contract media into the program. So um, I thought I'd start off with maybe the most important <coughs> thing about us is we are free. Um, so we provide media for students who are um, blind, visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, or deaf blind. And that's where the described and captioned comes in play. We um, make sure that we provide accessibility in two formats. One captioning for students who are deaf or hard of hearing, and then description for um, students who may be blind or visually impaired. And then um, students who are deaf blind, of course, would utilize media that is captioned and so, like I said, we're funded by the U.S. Department of Education, and we are administered by um, NAD. And then what services do we provide? We actually um, provide a collection of free on-demand um, media, educational media. And so we operate very much like Netflix. We stream the me you can stream the media if you're a member, but you can also request a... DVD copy, there are schools that still have limited access to internet and those types of technology, so we still have the DVD um, process in place. And then I'll kind of take these two together, um, the Learning Center and then the Gateway for Internet. Um, in our Learning Center, which is open to anyone, you don't have to be a member, we have articles there, we have scholarly research for um, things related to captioning, things related to described media. And um, we also have um, tidbits in there for teachers or parents who would like to use accessible media. And our technology is, um, our office is kind of divided in upstairs, downstairs, and we put the technology people downstairs. <laughs> but um, we actually have Roku, and we are in development with Apple TV to have our own channel there. Um, we have interactive transcripts, which allow teachers or parents or whoever may be using a title to search a keyword, which will actually take you to that point in the video. So if there's a vocabulary term that you really want to hone in on, then you can go right to that place in the media. Um, we also have Spanish media, and if there is a sister title, English and Spanish, then we you can, trans, you can skip back and forth between those two. Um, and you can also go back between accessibility formats. So if you want to see a portion that's captioned and then you want to skip over to a portion that's described, we, our interactive transcript allows you to do that as well. So um, the first accessibility feature I'll talk to you about is captioning, and that's probably pretty familiar to the majority of people. Um, basically what we do is we take the narration and we turn that into the text that runs at the bottom of the screen. Um, we have a captioning key which we developed ourselves, which we term as our manual of how captions should be. The FCC itself does not mandate quality for captioning, but we have certain specific guidelines that we follow. Um, we have reading rates, which we divide among grade levels. So if you are a um, pre-K, early learner, elementary grade school, you know the reading rate of that caption is going to be lower than for a high school student. We also pay particular attention to placement and something we call line breaks, like where we would be willing to break what's being said. And we make sure that those follow grammar rules as closely as possible. And then a national pro um, campaign that we participate in is called Read Captions Across America. And we coincide at the same time reading across America. So we like to get all Dr. Soups out as well. Um, teachers or parents, can request free materials here and one of those actually is a DVD of the different Dr. Seuss storybooks and if you're a member you sign up for that you request a kit you get to keep that DVD um, a student that participates in the program you can request the number of certificates of students that you have in the classroom and you actually can present your student with certificates for that um, we have posters and I actually have some over here at the end if you want to grab them they're there for you to take but this is our this is our reading captions across America mm -hmm. 
Um, for the next slide, there's going to be a quiz after, but this is an example of one of our <laughs> meetings. So, um, I'm going to try to remember how to do this. Like, I, I'm not in the bottom of the building. I'm in the top, so technology is not my thing. And I've been paranoid about these media files. <laughs> There will be a quiz. What's it about? <laughs> Nobody's even willing to venture. A new baby. A new baby. A new baby. Okay. Parents are stressed. Parents are stressed. Kind of like family relationships. Family relationships. So now I'll play it with the captions. Can you see them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what happens when Trudy goes off the school um, with her big mouth. But so hopefully what you see here is the impact that captions can make. You know, for a student who is deaf or hard of hearing in the classroom. You know, what if there's a PSA, there, you know, some some dire information that someone needs to be a hold of. It needs to be captioned. Um, what if a teacher gives us gives students an assignment that says, okay, I want you to watch this video. And here's notes that you need to get from the video. Well, if they can't hear, hear the video, how are they going to be able to get the notes? Or they're given a different type of assignment that requires them to be able to utilize the information in the video. If they have, if they're deaf or hard of hearing, it's going to be hard to do without captions. And then our second accessibility feature, and it's a little, it's a little newer in terms of the mandate from. Um, the Department of Ed saying that we had to provide this tribe media as well. I believe that came in like 1995 and the program has been in existence over 50 years and has been located at the current Spartanburg office for over 20. But um, description is basically the verbal description of key visual elements in media and live productions. 
It's also known as audio description or video description. I believe like PBS uses the term video description. Um, so what we do is in the quiet sections of video, we'll insert narration to explain what's going on in the video for students who are blind or visually impaired. Sometimes we, all, we may also find it necessary to bring the audio down so that the narrator may be speaking over, or our describer may be speaking over the original narr narration, especially for um, elements or actions that are essential to understanding what the video is. Again, much like captions, we do have a description key, and that description key, like the captioning key, makes sure that the consistency of what we do and the quality of what we do is maintained. Um, some key components of description are you have to make sure you describe what's on scene. You can't make any assumptions. Just because someone's smiling may not necessarily mean they're happy. So with emotions, we have to be very careful when it comes to description. It's also essential that there be time and space for us to identify any speakers and any titles that may be associated with that person so that as the video goes along, you know, whoever's watching is aware of who they are. And then, much like reading across America and um, reading captions across America, we also have a national program, Listening is Learning. And this is another one where um, you can request, you can request different kits for your students or for your child. Um, one of the cutest things, and of course it's for younger kids, is the Finnick Fox is kind of like the mascot for the program, but you can request a Finnick Fox mask and we ask students to put that on and then maybe the teacher shows a video and that's how they relate to description. You know, do you know what's going on? Did you listen to the to the purple cues and that kind of thing? But um, again, this stuff is free as well. Um, Listening is learning uh, is usually in April, so it comes after um, read captions across the year. So there's two more quizzes. Um, for this one, I would ask you to shut your eyes, please. And there'll be a few questions afterwards. So, sorry. In cartoon, the title Asmatech is it? Okay, because last very choppy. All right. 
close your eyes one more time. In cartoon, many asymptotes and red-handled letters against a yellow background with a thin red line around it. A boy appears. This is Winston. Winston, you're not supposed to be here. 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 A mask in the case and two puffers with extra capsules don't make that path. But Winston never felt fine. No matter how hard he tried, he always felt different. He loves the backpack. <coughs> All the kids run and the others pass Winston and stop. <coughs> he uses a puffer, also known as an inhaler, as the others watch. In band, they all play instruments. Winston plays too well, but has to stop. <coughs> In class, a teacher shows them a picture of Hope making them laugh. As Winston laughs, the others watch him with a puffer. Do you know the title now? Stop. <laughs> yeah, okay. Asthma tech. Asthma tech. Yeah. What's the poster in the doctor's office? Lungs. Lungs. He plays the tuba. Why do the kids laugh? The teacher shows him a funny picture in a book. So that's just hopefully to demonstrate the added features that description can bring for um, students who are blind or visually impaired. So who can use DCMP? Well, um, anyone can use our information services. So what's on our website, our learning center, um, you can use our captioning Key, you can use our description key. We do have some producers who are who will allow us to post their media available to anyone. So any of those free titles are available to anyone. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel, you will also find um, the free media that producers say that we can post. Plus, you will also see um, about three minute clips for all of our titles. So anytime we add a new title, there's a preview there that so you can kind of get a feel for what the, what the new title we have coming into the library. The media service, um, you have to qualify to get the majority of our titles. And qualifying is to have a student that meets the deaf, blind, visually impaired, hard of hearing, or deaf blind student. But I will also say, um, we do have a vetting process, but I'm just going to kind of throw out there, try it anyway. You know, if you think that this is something that you know could be of service to you, go online, go to the sign-in sheet, fill it out. There are instances where we have um, students um, who are autistic, and they, their, um, their parents are allowed to gain um, membership. So there is a vetting process, but I say try it anyway. Um, usage must benefit at least one of those qualifying students. And then who qualifies to use DCMP? Teachers, administrators, interpreters, interveners. Uh, those are usually um, working with children who are deafblind. Uh, TBIs, other school personnel, so social workers, um, maybe school psychologists, parents, teachers and interpreters who are in training. So if you know someone who is in college and they want to be an interpreter, they can sign up for our service. We do have sign language material. Uh, students which we'll talk about, and then anyone supporting a student who falls into the categories. So, kind of like some of our benefits, we have over 5,600 accessible titles. Um, some of them are captioned only because in the beginning we were only captioned media program. And then, like I said, the mandate came in a little bit later to add description. So some producers we have, we have the Weston Woods and Magic School Bus. If you watch Magic School Bus on Netflix and you watch the described version, that is actually our description. We did that. Um, other kids' literature, Mo Willems, Katie Camayo. Um, of course, you know Mo from The Pigeons and um, Nuffle Bunny and Trixie. And then Kate, she's the author of Because of Winn-Dixie and Until the Desperado. Desperado. Um, 
have a boo-boo here. Magic School Bus does not belong to National Geographic. So with National Geographic, we actually have Bob Chronicles and Critter Cam if you're interested in science. History Channel, we have How the Earth Was Made, the Universe, America, the Story of Us. Those are very popular um, with our users. And then there are five additional grants that the U.S. Department of Education kind of issues in terms of accessibility, and those are television grants. So they work with ABC, NBC, uh, CBS, Clinton Entertainment, and some other people, and we actually kind of um, partnered with them so that the, those networks have given those grant operators permission to give us the, the media as well. So some of those are Astro Glass, we have Chris Pet Vet, um, All In, <coughs> All Patrol, we have some titles, Door the Explorer. So things that are kind of really relevant to the younger kids, we, we have some of those titles as well through this partnership. And we are charged with all grade levels. So that would be preschool, early learning through 12th grade, and all content areas. So if you're a science teacher, we've got you covered. If you're a social studies teacher, we've got you covered. Kindergarten, we've got you. Um, we also have Spanish language materials for use with a qualified ELL student. And then for the major majority of titles, we have lesson guides or other resources available that go with those titles that you can make use of in the classroom. And then. We have the, you can have the ability to embed our titles into a learning management system. So like if you use Moodle or Blackboard, you can embed those. And then like I talked about before, the interactive transcript allows you to jump to specific places in the video that are of interest to you. You can switch between the accessibility of caption and description, plus you can also switch between English and Spanish for teachers or for titles that have sister titles. Um, we have created training videos. So there's a video that shows you how to use the interactive transcript. There's a video that shows you how to embed media. We have a video that shows you how to use our student accounts. And um, I'm pretty sure Roku Roku's on there. And then if you want to come to the website and you're trying to figure out what media we do have, you can do a keyword search so that if you're looking for something on environmental science you can search that way or you could actually go to our topic or subject heading search under science and then it breaks it down even further and then it will actually give you a list of all the videos that fall in that category so how can you watch us you can request a dvd and if you do we actually pay for us to ship it to you and for you to ship it back to us it has to be returned because of the agreements that we signed with um, our producers you get a one week, but that can be extended if you would like, and then the discs are fully accessible with talking views. You can stream from the computer or the mobile device, so Android or um, Apple, and um, you can get our app in the Apple Store, so we fit in the back of the headrest too. And then, of course, we there's Roku, and like I said, there's a training video on how to use that and set that up, and then Apple TV, we're currently in development with them. So our student accounts was kind of our attempt to make it more um, of a direct use for students because it's kind of adult driven, the majority, you know. A student just can't go on our website and sign up for an account, it actually has to be an adult account. However, now an adult can give a student permission and you actually get to set those permissions up. So if there's a certain topic you don't want a student to see, then you can block that out. So very much like parental controls on, on TV. Um, you know, limited view of material, which you said, can be grouped by classes if you're a teacher. And media permission can be assigned based on a topic, a subject, a title level, um, to the individual or to the groups that you've added into that. Okay. You can share them, teacher manages all that, and the permissions are enforced by us, what you said. And there we are. <laughs>